Hi, in this segment, you will learn how to share the gospel using illustrations. You'll recall the five steps in disciple making. Build friendship, share the gospel, ask for commitment, make disciples and multiply disciples. Now, you can share the gospel using your hand. The five fingers representing the five points of the gospel. You'll recall, uh, number one, it is grace. Number two, it's man. Then God, Christ and faith. In this segment, we will look at two, grace and man, meaning you will share the gospel, grace and man, with illustrations. Now, illustrations are very important because they illuminate the concepts or the idea or the truths. They clarify, they explain so that the meaning comes out clearly and people listening would understand. Okay, let's begin now. We start with grace. I've got good news for you. Eternal life is a free gift of God. It is not earned or deserved. What do we mean by that? Well, number one, God gives us eternal life as a free gift because of his unconditional love. You don't have to earn it or deserve of it. That is why it is called grace. Think of a friend who gives you a gift simply because you are his friend. Now, if you were to pay for that gift, then it is no more a gift, but a transaction. But God gives us as a gift, this gift of eternal life. Now, so eternal love is not a transaction. God gives it to us free. You cannot earn your way to heaven by your own effort or your good deeds. Neither are you deserving of it because of your piety, hospitality or charity. So eternal life or heaven is a free gift of God. But none of us are able to obtain it. What hinders us from receiving this gift? It is sin. Man is a sinner. In fact, all men have sinned, regardless of our station. Whether we are young, whether we are old, whether we are rich, whether we are poor, whether we are educated, whether we are not educated, whether we are clever, not so clever, whether we are evil or good, all men have sin. Now, what do you understand by sin? Well, sin is a violation of God's standards in thought, word and deed. Actually, there are five categories of sin. We could sin in our thoughts. Uh, we could have wicked thoughts, lustful thoughts, immoral thoughts. Or we could sin in our speech. Uh, we could speak lies, slander or curses or participate in gossips. Or we could sin in our hearts, harboring hatred, revenge, anger, envy, resentment. Or we could actually commit deeds uh, like stealing, killing and cheating and acts of cruelty. And the fifth category is we could either neglect or ignore knowing what is right, but not doing it, including disobedience, disobedience to God's commands. So there are five categories of sin. That means to say, when measured according to God's standards, even someone who thinks he is good has actually committed a great number of sins. Now let me just illustrate. Let's say a good person. How many times do you think he could sin in a day? Maybe three sins a day, given the five categories of sins. In a month, that would add up to 30 times three, 90 sins. Since there are 12 months in a year, you multiply that by 90, 12 to 90, we would have committed more than 1,000 sins in a year. Uh, if we live to be 80 years old, we would have committed 80,000 sins. So measured against God's standard, we would have committed a great number of sins. If you were God and I had committed this number of sins, would you let me into heaven? Certainly not. So man cannot save himself because of sin. Man cannot save himself because God's standard is perfection. We cannot save ourselves any more than a drowning person could ever save himself by grabbing his own hair and pulling himself out of the water. Now we often think, uh, that our good deeds would outweigh our bad deeds and qualify us to enter heaven. In fact, many people think this way. Oh, yes, I, I sin, but my good deeds will outweigh them. We carry the idea of a scale in our minds, but God doesn't look or doesn't use scales. So, our good deeds, but this will not do because how good is good enough? Our good deeds. 
if we say we are good we have to be as good as god is which is impossible heaven is a perfect place and god's standard is perfection let me illustrate uh assuming you come to my house for breakfast and i prepare uh, an omelet breakfast for you and i have 10 eggs to make that omelet uh i've already mixed 9 eggs and they all are good but the last one when i break it open it is rotten but i mix it anyway and then because it's smelly i put all kinds of spices to take the smell away do you think the resulting omelet will be a good one certainly not it will be a bad one the one rotten egg will contaminate the other nine therefore making the whole omelet unworthy to be eaten even one sin can contaminate all the good works that we have done so it is impossible for us to enter heaven with our own effort and good works we cannot save ourselves there must be a different way let us look at god's way now that concludes uh grace and man now practice speaking uh the gospel the grace and man portion until you can speak it without looking god bless you